Okay, so uh, Dr. Ina Lakshan from the Hormone Rebalance Center. I just wanted to walk you guys through uh, the most common hormone tests that we run in our office because we get asked about this all the time. Um, first of all, what kind of testing it is? How is it different than maybe the usual blood work that my family doctor may run? What kind of additional information can you get? So I wanted to quickly show you, we use what's called the Dutch test, dried urine testing for comprehensive hormones run by Precision Analytical in the States. Um, the reason why we love this test, because first of all, there's a really great benefit for testing hormones through urine, and that's um, that it shows all the downstream metabolites from these hormones. What that means is that not only are we able to assess how much you're producing of your main hormones, but how is the body metabolizing them? How is it breaking it down? How is your liver functioning with regards to hormone breakdown? Is it using the cancer protective pathways, possibly more cancer promoting pathways? Um, and how can we change those pathways to make sure that everything is healthy and stable and well balanced? So we get a wealth of information, about 50 different hormone markers in this report and about a 15 page personalized report, as you can see. So this type of test is really great. Uh, there's different panels. So the first panel is the sex hormone panel. And this is a panel that's great to assess if you are suffering with any symptoms related to your period. So anything like heavy or painful periods, irregular periods, breast tenderness, migraine headaches, bloating, water or general water retention, skin breakouts, maybe uh, conditions like fibroids, endometriosis, or PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, possibly infertility, uh, or anything on the spectrum of uh, perimenopause or menopause, such as hot flashes, night sweats, poor memory, poor libido, sex drive and such, uh, vaginal dryness, uh, mood swings, weight gain, of course, is one of those as well. So the first panel, reproductive sex hormones. Um, this is a summary page. I'm gonna go on to, you know, this shows things numerically. This is is our big ticket item page <laughs> and this is where we get to assess the different hormones and how they're actually broken down so at the top here we have markers for progesterone here markers for the three different estrogens testosterone DHEA and as you can see the way you would sort of read this report is uh, this is the lower end higher end of the green zone which is for menstruating women purple box is for postmenopausal range okay so our first goal with every woman is A, to ensure that she's producing the right amount of hormones for the right, uh, for her age. And she's not too high or too low for her age. And the other really good thing about this is because this is so uh, nicely visually represented, uh, we always look for balance between the hormones. So for example, we always look to see that the nose here of progesterone is in a nice balance with estrogen, because maybe you're in the normal reference range, but you're in high normal for estrogen, low normal for progesterone and that imbalance alone is the cause of many of your symptoms versus on blood work this is not going to be picked up you're just going to appear as everything is normal you're not you know there's no problems uh, plus on blood work you only assess estradiol rather than the other um, estrogens like estron and estriol so once we assess for these then we also get to see liver metabolism there's what's called phase one liver detox detoxification and phase two liver detoxification in this part um, in this chart graph over here pie chart um, we get to see the different metabolites of estrogen and what their expected healthy percentages are and then for each woman individually what her actual percentage is where they stand um, what this tells us is whether or not you're uh, breaking down your estrogens and the protective cancer protective, healthy, you know, protective pathway, or possibly using the more dangerous ones that can bind and damage DNA and cause, you know, disease and increased risk of cancer. So all of this is workable. This is all um, kind of like a metabolic picture, meaning this doesn't, this is not a diagnostic test by any means. This isn't meant to diagnose if you have actual disease. This is meant to tell us, is your body choosing the healthy, way of doing things or the non-healthy way of doing things. And then we can adjust it to healthy balance because all of these things are workable. There's things to speed up this pathway and make your body choose this pathway versus slow down 
and uh, you know not choose these pathways. So there's actual natural interventions, specific formulations, certain foods that we can use, certain uh, herbs and botanicals, certain vitamins that can help drive these uh, pathways. Okay. And then lastly, we also get to assess testosterone, which is really important for women for things like their sex drive, their stamina, their energy, motivation, bone health, all of that. This is the sex hormone plat, um, panel. Then we move on to adrenal and cortisol and our stress markers. Again, this shows things numerically. I always prefer the visual ones. Um, here we get to assess melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. So to first of all, see if you struggle with sleep, is it a stress uh, cortisol production issue or is insufficient melatonin hormone uh, production issue? Cause that's an easy fix. And then we get to assess uh, your cortisol production throughout the day. So again, where your urine testing is superior is we check, um, you know, you do a urine collection, dried urine collection at five points throughout the day because cortisol, our stress hormone, is a hormone that fluctuates throughout the day. So checking just one time on blood work is sort of irrelevant because it doesn't give us any pattern. It doesn't tell us is it going up or going down versus with urine testing, we're really able to graph and map out how your stress hormone is being produced throughout the day. And as you can see here, it first needs to be produced highest in the morning and then gradually drop during the day. So some people who have very low energy in the mornings are underproducing, or generally are almost like flatlined, as you can see in this case. And other times people are way overproducing in the afternoon and nighttime, and so they struggle falling asleep or even wake up in the middle of the night. So when we're able to, to see what is actually going on, then we know how to correct it better because for some people we need to boost up their cortisol in the morning. Some people we need to slow down and reduce their cortisol production at night. Some people we need to do both if their curve looks like the total opposite. So um, this, you know, testing gives us a lot of information uh, and then to see how your body does it keep it in the more uh, active form of cortisol or does it deactivate cortisol to its uh, inactive form as cortisol, which we want a nice balance. We don't want, uh, you know, to choose one much more than the other. So again, there's lots of interventions to support that, literally support your stress response. When this is relevant is for symptoms like poor sleep, literally poor stress response, um, overwhelm when you're gaining weight around your midsection, um, if you are sick a lot, especially around stressful time periods, uh, waking up in the middle of the night, waking up too early, low energy, Energy, uh, autoimmune disease because cortisol plays a role in that lots of cravings all of that uh, goes uh, into cortisol uh, can, can help um, give us answers when we assess cortisol okay and lastly there's another panel here which is the organic acids and neurotransmitters this gives us some vitamin markers for b12 for b6 which is really important for moods glutathione marker which is a marker um, for antioxidants uh, this is the mother of antioxidants as they call this uh, this nutrient uh, really important also for both liver and estrogen detoxification as well as really good for skin health so if there's any skin issues aging skin skin breakouts adult acne uh, melasma discoloration things like that um, could be due to glutathione deficiency or could be generally greatly improved with glutathione supplementation so we get to see if you're deficient and we also get to look at markers um, for your moods so things like dopamine norepinephrine epinephrine which is pretty much our adrenaline um, as well as like i mentioned sleep hormone and lastly oxidative stress this is a general marker for how much dna damage you have going on how much inflammation there is going on it's a general marker that could be related to a lot of diseases but again all correctable if it's high we just want to lower that that means you're not you don't have um you, enough antioxidants in relation to the level of oxidative stress that you're exposed to. So um, I hope this kind of gave you a good idea of, of what this test looks at. And then when we combine this with your actual symptoms, you know, the treatment plan becomes so much easier uh, to choose because we see exactly where we're working on. You know, you're not just going to a health food store picking up things based on your symptoms or whatever your girlfriend may have told you to, to take because it worked for her. We're really, really getting specific uh, and customized with our treatment plans because we focus on what your body is lacking, what it is 
is overproducing, what it is underproducing, and we give it literally what it needs. Um, please make sure to reach out to us if you have questions about this type of testing. This is a home collection, so we can ship it out uh, to most places, um, even around the world. But reach out to us if you're intern, you know, if you're outside of uh, of Canada or outside of the states, really. Um, and I will be happy to help you arrange. Um, no, just make those arrangements and walk you through when it is that you need to collect because it needs to be done at a certain time of the month if you're a menstruating woman uh, versus if you're a non-menstruating woman. So we'll be happy to answer all those questions. I hope you found this video helpful and this just gives you an idea of the type of testing that we run in our office.